All right, everybody, Adam, back with another episode of the Bowhunter Chronicles podcast. John down here with me in studio working on some new uh, camera stuff. And uh, John came down here and said, what in the hell do you have going on here? Yeah, <laughs> looks good. But uh, trying out some new stuff going to be in, uh, like I said, the, for the 2022, like seriously getting into uh, video and uh, not throwing things around in the studio here making noise but, uh, but that's what we do um so we got aaron sheets tonight uh with uh barren ridge tree stands and if you're uh, a saddle hunter and you have been following along this could be like one of the most uh i don't know i don't want to say controversial but like talked about uh products out right now uh and it's kind of one of those things and, and we'll, I, I want to get into it just uh, talking with John even about like methodology and, and thought process. Um, but it is, well, um, Aaron, why don't you introduce yourself and kind of tell us a little bit about yourself and, and, and what I'm rambling about. <laughs> yes, sir. And thanks for having me on again, guys. My name is Aaron Sheets. I am a uh, co-owner of Barron Ridge Tree Stands. I'm a 2013 graduate of Radford University. Um, I'm a assistant project manager and estimator for Southern Thermal Solutions, we do pipe insulation, commercial cold storage. Um, yeah, this is something that we've uh, been kind of fiddling around with for about a year now. Alex came up with the idea um, when he started saddle hunting last year in public land and he designed it for himself. And uh, he's a full time taxidermist and he had piles of people constantly coming in to his shop that wanted to check it out and try it out and <clears throat> it just kind of all from there he got a lot of interest in it and sold a bunch to some of our buddies and we just decided to take this thing on full bore and so you, you said that he had started um a set well so how many guys are involved with the with the project and how did it come from something in the taxidermy shop to a full-blown production and, and i guess what is it that we're talking about like <laughs> <laughs> right right so um last part it's a um saddle climbing platform that we designed specifically for saddle hunters it is a basically it's a mini climber and it is exactly what it sounds like you know you get up in the tree with it and you can use one foot or two foot you know we recommend one foot putting your foot against it foot against the tree and just bring it up the tree I, we just released our um full fully produced video that our good friend Tyler Weaver from The Given Right, he films for The Given Right, and he made a video for us. Um, we just released that this week, and it's three of us. It's me, Josh Rablin, and Alex Rablin. Alex Rablin is the creator. Josh, of course, is his brother, and then it's me as well. Okay. So um, you said he started saddle hunting last year. Like, overall, what's your, uh, like, style of hunting and, like, a hunting history? So my hunting history is I grew up hunting private land. I still predominantly do hunt private land. Um, most of my properties are that I hunt are 100 acres, 200 acres. So mobile hunting is not really needed, but I love jumping around. I love, you know, just getting to adjust, you know, based on the wind. Like I still want to hunt this buck that's, you know, maybe using this hollow. So, you know, just based on the wind with the saddle and this climbing platform, I can just adjust you know, just bounce around tree to tree instead of lugging my 20 something pound summit viper or old 1980s api around or resetting climbing sticks you know whatever um that's been my hunting history um alex and our other friend got us into saddle hunting last year he bought a uh, cruiser xc and he just raved and raved and raved about it so alex went out and got him a, a tethered eberhardt series and he started using it and he was using the climbing sticks and stuff. And Alex is just buck wild. Like our public land here is anywhere from 60,000 acres to 100,000 acres. And for those that don't know, we're in the Western part of Virginia. We're butted right smack up against West Virginia. So, I mean, it is mountains and <laughs> Alex doesn't care. If there's a buck out there, he's gonna go find it. He'll hike three, four, five miles in, you know, with bringing sticks and stuff like, yeah, those sticks might be light, but there's a mon monstrous difference in carrying 15 and 20 pounds and versus carrying 10 or 12 for four or five miles going up mountains back down mountains to go 
you know, chasing bucks that have probably never even seen a person before. That's the kind of deer he goes after. So that was the initial part of him inventing this climber. Because we grew up using climbers. He did too. So he literally made it for himself. Like this was his thing he made for himself. And then, like I said, people were coming to this taxidermy shop, saw it sitting on a freezer and, you know, started asking and joking, like, you know, is that your climber you made for your baby? And he's like, no, that's, <laughs> that's, that's mine. <laughs> So it, this is kind of where I wanted to ask John here about the, um, like kind of like the methodology and the, and the, the use of it, because, you know, we came up like, I guess, John, for you, when you started hunting from like your first mobile type setup or whatever, was it? My first setup ever was a Baker tree stand. So it was the old aluminum frame, you know, heavy, loud, you know, clanker. And then, and then we went to like the TSS sniper, another, you know, climbing stand. Um, along the way, we had some just old lock-ons and stuff, but you know, we hunted all public land, so you didn't. We didn't really leave our stands out anywhere because, you know, they just get ripped off. And then, when did you end up with a like? summit or did you go through the loggy bayou phase no. oh yeah loggy bayou was like i had one of those up until well, i still i ended up giving it to my buddy jason you know a few years ago but that was i started i switched over from the loggy over to a summit or at, actually it was an api i think and uh because i like the the full capture mm -hmm. you know like, man, I can't believe I sat all those years in a freaking a stand with no harness and nothing around me. And I was like, well, but, and then, you know, we, as we got, you know, as we progressed in and got better, like lock-ons, you know, we, I used some of those too. And then, you know, then we got the XOPs and, but. Because what I just thinking about myself was similar like my dad had an old baker and then had loggy bayou and then i hunted out of that a few times and that's when i met frank and everything went you know to where we're at today but the the question seems to be you know well with this mini climber why don't you just use a regular climber why you know you're still limited to the same amount of tree selection and everything like that but you know, so many guys have had so much success from that. Right. And there's so many guys that even in like our Patreon group and different things, they'll say, you know, I thought I was going to save weight and here I am at 30 pounds or, you know, 28 well, it's, pounds. It's definitely, I mean, with the saddle sticks and all the equipment, there's definitely not a weight savings. It's just a bulk savings. And getting into any tree that you want I mean, for me. So, so that's like where I guess my thing with this stand is, is like, I, I threw it on the scale before we came down here. Cause I, they sent it to me. I didn't even, you know, just small little tree stand. I didn't need to weigh it knowing, you know, it don't weigh that much, right. but it's on my scale. I don't know what your advertised weight is Aaron, but it, it was 3.8 pounds on my scale. And you know, so then I had, um, this, uh, TX five with uh, a couple of ropes. And, uh, one of them is an XOP rope that has like a one pound carabiner <laughs> or whatever. Right. Um, but, uh, it, and that was 3.2 pounds. So you're, you're looking at seven pounds and realistically, aside from something to hang your bow from, that's, that's all you would need. Yep. And now I want to get into your, your thoughts on this, Aaron, and like you guys' production and your feedback and everything like that, because personally, well, why don't you go into like how the thing works and then I'll tell you why it doesn't, but we'll go from there. <laughs> nice. That's cool. <clears throat> and to touch on um, what y'all said, you know, yeah, like, why wouldn't I use my stomach, you know? I mean, you know, if you're somebody like me who only walks in 100 yards, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, do what, do what suits your budget, man. Like, do what you have. 
Like, what, what, how is ours better? Well, it's smaller, so it's not going to climb against as many trees. You know, it's not as big as the summit. So, yeah, you know, you're not going to be bumping against stuff, rubbing against stuff. It's not going to be as cumbersome. It's not going to be as heavy, you know. Um, but as far as, like, how it works. So, what you're going to do is you're just going to attach it to the tree. You're going to attach your tether. You're going to get up in it. You're going to hook yourself to your tether first. You're going to strap yourself in for safety. Then you're going to put your boot strap, which is going to be the one that's attached that's permanently attached to the stand. You're gonna put that over your boot. You're gonna take your other leg strap around. You're gonna go around your Achilles. You really don't wanna get that too tight because that thing can <laughs> crimp down pretty freaking tight and you won't have any mobility in your foot. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna raise your tether above your head. <clears throat> you're gonna tighten your tether, put one leg against the tree. It's not, it's not an exercise. You're literally just gonna place it against the tree for leverage. You're gonna put all your weight back into the saddle and you're just gonna lift your foot up. And if you take your time or if you have any experience at all in using a climbing stand, it's going to be quiet. You're going to be quiet because it's not a fast jerking motion. It is not, again, it's not an exercise. You're just literally shifting all your way back into your seat. You're going to lift your foot up. You're going to tighten your tether again. You're going to get a, two climbs out of each time you put your tether above your head. And you're just going to repeat that process up until you get to your hunting height. And once you get to your hunting height, you're going to loosen your leg strap, put it around the tree and tighten it down. Like get that son of a gun tight because then once you do that, one of the most common questions I get is about side pressure. And we wanted to wait until we actually did it ourselves before we answered this question because side pressure is one of the most commonly asked questions. And if you get that bootstrap around that tree tight, you can, hunt just about any way you want to it passed all the astm tests we sent it to we sent it out to a third party testing facility it got a 300 pound safety rating we went to the repetition test which is 300 pounds bounced off of it 10,000 times which takes 48 continuous hours to pass and then we had the adherence test which is a side pressure like test they'll put 300 pounds on each corner of the tree stand to see how much it deflects. It's a deflection and adherence test. So this is not something that, you know, we make in a garage that we think is cool. And so this is something that we paid several thousand dollars to get tested and to get certified by the ASTM, paid the money out of pocket. We got reports, graphs, everything, everything we needed to sell a safe product to the public. Yeah. I think that that's huge. And, and that, processes um you know if you don't i want to say that this is not even if you i i don't even know so it is one of those things where it's not like a i feel like not a beginner level um thing because i we grew up with climbers and you know john talking about the baker stands and the early loggy bayous and even some of the later loggy bios where there was no top portion. So you were hugging the tree and lifting up and going up and, you know, for, I don't think until I use my um, lone wolf sit and climb, did I ever use a harness climbing up the tree with a, with a tree stand. Now, when I got up there, I used it. Uh, but, but climbing the tree never, um, and because of that, I think I, I, it was, it was easy for me to use this thing. And then I'm comfortable with a saddle. So I trust the ropes. I trust the process. I trust the whole thing. Um, my brother-in-law, on the other hand, I threw him in it when we were up in the UP, and said go ahead and use it just like another climber well he'd never really been in a saddle so he didn't trust the ropes and he was kind of swinging around and he was he was pretty leery of uh what like the whole process so like for guys that just want to step in and they want to say okay well i want i, I hunt from a climber now and they've used a two-piece climber their whole life and they've always had something to put their hands on and just kind of like do a dip and pull their, pull their weight up. And then they've never been in a saddle 
um, this is going to be a, a much different um, experience, I would say. I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is going to be something that's going to take some practice and some getting used to for beginner hunters, like you said. Um, you can climb with it with two feet if people feel more comfortable with that. You know, we don't have that in our instructions, but that kind of veers off into just a comfortability thing and a uh, safety thing with what you feel is safer and more comfortable for yourself as a user. But yeah, as far as being geared toward people who have been hunting for a while, yeah, that's pretty spot on. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a quick question. I'm looking at it. So what's the biggest tree you can get in it? About a 12 inch? So no, with the four foot cable, which comes with each tree stand, you can get in uh, nine inch to 17 inch diameter. We do sell five foot cables for larger trees and three foot cables for if you want to tackle smaller trees, kind of like we do. We like the three foot cable better personally, because I mean, you can, <laughs> on smaller trees, you can scream up a tree. Yeah. And that's one of the things. So I was using it today in, in, in the yard here again, before this, trying to scooch around and see different trees and different tree sizes. And, um, it, it and we had talked, so I, this, none of this is really surprising to Aaron because we had talked about like some of like my thoughts and some of the, like the limitations and kind of where they're going with it. But, um, even on some of those trees where, it'll just fit around. It's almost like the, the stand itself is too, too narrow. Um, because it doesn't, it, that's what I was looking at. Yeah. Just because of the width of the, you know, the width of the stand itself, you know, the cable might go around the tree, but how, I guess I didn't, I haven't, honestly, I haven't messed with that. I haven't climbed a tree or tried to yet. So I was just looking at it just, you know, like, well, the diameter of the tree is going to be limited. Yeah. And, and for, for people that are like, like the, the methodology of this. And that, so I just picked up a, a, a one stick, um, uh, set up and I weighed that today because I wanted to see, you know, when we're talking about, uh, weight, uh, philosophies of use, uh, all of these different things. Um, and that stick, with the the 40 foot of rope and the aider and everything is like 5.8 pounds so with that and it's a heavy stick but with that in the saddle so now you're up about nine pounds versus eight pounds with that but even if you were to use this and you you i know you had talked there about side pressure and that's the one thing that people are curious about one of the questions that i had was you know you're gonna have um those uh i don't know what you call it, the arms or the supports the upright tubes on the sides um mm -hmm. that some people will ask about limiting movement around the tree and and, and all of that sort of thing but many guys that are one sticking are carrying up a platform anyways so if you wanted to use this as a a sub a sub four pound climbing method um you're you're still miles ahead if you're in an area where you know where the there's pole trees and you can get up them and you're um right you're yeah. used to it you know i mean for you're you'd be at you know eight pounds nine pounds plus your saddle which you know some guys will say well sticks are the same way but I mean, I can tell you that I somehow like caught lightning in a bottle picking trees in the UP because the one tree was perfect size and I was so incredibly high <laughs> that it was like in, in a matter of minutes where every little breeze was like <laughs> uh, kind of like some, some pucker factor. Um, but Aaron, what's like the feedback that you're getting online, both um, good and bad right so well in, i guess even from people that are using it and then people that are online so you kind of debunk any myths 
so as far as users go, I would say we've gotten dang close to 98% being positive feedback from people that have actually used it. Um, those people might say that, you know, yeah, bigger trees, it's not really that great, but for medium size to small size, they love it. Um, for people who haven't used it, Facebook has been, Facebook, it's been a, a pretty even split. Um, a lot of people are wary about noise as I say, the pins look loud. And that's, that's, a, that's a very fair uh, thing to say if you haven't used it. Um, for people who have used it, I haven't got a single report back from uh, somebody saying it's loud. Um, other things have been limbs. People ask about, you know, what do I do when I come to limbs? Because we are an insured business. I, I have to say, you either cut them off or find another tree. Um, but really, I mean, the, the negative has not really been negative. It's been more critical, I'd say just with the noise, with what's, how is this any better than my one stick has been a lot of, a lot of it, or how is this better than my sticks? Because I can get up trees with limbs and we realize, you know, people around the United States are not as fortunate as we are, man. Like all of our trees around here in our mountains, public land doesn't matter. They're hickories, they're poplars, they're oaks. That's our trees that we have. So just about anywhere you hunt, if you're hunting with us in Augusta, Rockingham, Nelson, Albemarle County, any local county, it's pick your it's pick your preference. Like it's literally pick whatever you want. And we get that not everybody is that lucky. So when it comes to limbs, you know, treat it as another tool in your tool bag, man. You know, if you're going to a spot that you're familiar with and you don't think you can use it, don't use it. Use what you know is going to work. Go kill your buck. Go kill your deer. Don't force the issue. If you're hunting a new spot and you think you might have some telephone poles out there, that's what ours is designed for. Easy, light carry. Scream up a tree. Go kill your deer. If, again, if you're hunting your place that you're familiar with and you know it's not going to work, don't use it. It's a tool in your tool belt. It's not a one-size-fits-all. It's not here to erase everything. It's here to help and be another tool for you to go kill your deer. So for me, one of the things that is um, the improvements that I would make is the, the footprint that it has isn't that big to begin with. And so having to adjust both pins, if you had to adjust both sides, you'd have to adjust both pins on both sides because it does fold flat and like messing around with that and i guess if you had used it a whole bunch and you i mean obviously you know you guys have made it you've probably taken those pins out and put them back in you know four million times um but for me trying to do that process in the dark line it up and get that those pins in there um i think you could almost leave it welded open it doesn't take up that much space. It's not that bulky compared to, I mean, a, a st you know, everybody's going to say, well, you know, my shikar sticks, they are only as tall as a dollar bill when they're folded up. And, you know, the new Skeletors are, you know, pretty thin, but I mean, I'm looking at uh, three B sticks together and they're, you know, 10 inches tall. I mean, that, that isn't that much bigger and i would make it just a little bit wider uh to fit some of those trees that are you know basketball size or larger um in and it's not about foot room i think we've had the conversation on here a million times about do you need the predator xl or the mission or or whatever and by by that time you end up with a lot more weight and and things but yeah because i just i prefer the the regular predator the smaller one um i had to step out for a second so maybe i missed it but so are you using i mean how long have you been saddle hunting i've been saddle hunting uh i started i started when alex um invented this and, and he wanted me to come over and try it and his was the first time i've ever even been in a saddle and it was, his was the uh, eberhard series by tethered and i ended up buying it and i love it and <laughs> i loved it so much like man this year even in 
even if I went to a stand I already have set up, which would be like a latch on, like I flip the latch on around and just use my saddle and just because I just, I love it so much. I just, it's just, it's just better. <laughs> it's just so much more fun. It just adds another cool dimension to something that we, you know, we do so much in hunting that it's just so much more fun. And I use the, our platform all year long and to touch on um, something y'all said about being wider. That is something that we have been actively discussing by actively. I mean, literally every single day we're talking about improvements and how can we get better? You know, yeah, it's cool being the first. And like we talked before, you know, we're going to catch all the flack. We're going to catch all the negativity, the positivity. And that's a bonus for us because yeah, we can see where we need to get better. And um, as far as the pins go, you know, the way I used to stand, I'll leave it set up because I don't want to, I don't want to be messing with the pins either. And like you said, you know, I don't use it folded up. I keep it on the outside of my backpack. So the only thing I got to do is remove the left side, throw the pins back in. Let's get climbing. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question, John? Like, yeah. Or yeah. I was I just trying to get a background, you know, like on how, how much, you know, saddle experience he has and if have you used any of the other plat well obviously you can't answer that you haven't used any of the other platforms or climbing mm -hmm. methods <clears throat> um <clears throat> no no i haven't used any of the any of the actual um saddle related sticks i have some bone collector sticks uh just from using different tree stands different tree stand methods that i've used in conjunction with the with the saddle and um it's all fun I mean, it's <laughs> they're all fun they all have their perks they all have their time and place sure so uh, I, I guess one of the questions i would ask you is like what is your average uh hunting height it just depends it depends on where i'm at um this year i hunted with the platform and i got in late and i literally hunted four feet off the ground and I just had a spot where I had, that's all the higher I needed to get. And I had great cover and I had two bucks come in within three yards of me and feed and eat acorns all evening. And then everyone looked at me, but then other times, you know, I'll get, I like, uh, I like to get up to, um, 20, 24 feet. It just depends on where I'm at and how far I need to see. And if I'm using a gun or bow. Okay. Yeah. I, pretty typical answer um there i was just curious because being in like hill country and stuff you know if you're getting a, if, if you are, uh, find yourself regularly in spaces where you want to be you know 25 30 feet up because of the ridge systems or whatever um mm -hmm. that's another few sticks and that yeah. changes weight dramatically things mm -hmm. like that now I, I, I don't know if it was today or the last time i was hunting john i was thinking this because i've been hunting quite a bit lower this year um and looking at cover and things like that and i thought about it like in your hunting career or whatever with a climber did you ever find yourself hunting five feet off the ground or eight feet off the ground never like i was always so i, I think we kind of talked about this before i was always like at the 20 foot because my bow rope was always 20 feet and I would tie it to the, my bottom section of my stand. And I would usually go up until that got tight. And there was times where I actually would pull my bow up. So, but it was because I was in a pole tree and I, well, I was trying to get up, you know, unless I was, unless I had a tree, say like a hemlock or a cedar that was like right next to the other tree where I'd have some limbs, but I'd still get up, you know, 20 feet. Cause that's one of the things I just, found myself thinking about is like you know and it might be just based on like you carried all that bulk out there and then you have to find this certain tree that you can get up and there's usually not cover around it so right. you're you're in the wide open and you're like all right well i need to be up there to that that spot where now i'm like man if i could just get right there right um and i just wonder how much of that you know plays into uh, some of the some of the decisions now for for you Aaron in the in the areas that you hunt that kind of sounds like where you're you're hunting where you're walking through all of these this vast forest where the canopy's way up there so they're all poultry so you're just trying to get up out of line of sight right 
exactly especially on uh public land where we went yesterday you know we were Corey and i were discussing this like with it yes being so such a high canopy like you know we have six and eight foot scrub trees where you know bow season you just need just to get above them well rifle season i mean if you get <laughs> you get 20 or 30 feet up if you can shoot three four hundred yards through the forest just because i mean it is old woods okay so you said you guys were you know making stands all working like gangbusters today um i i guess what's what's coming down the pike or like like how where's your guys's mind at like you said you're going to take all the flack for being first and everything and i think one of the things i would i would be uh i don't want to say like nervous about but i think i'd be kind of pissed is you know you guys are kind of hanging it all out there right to to mm -hmm. say you know you're 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 testing the waters and you're gonna take all the flack but then the next guy's going to come along and he's going to be like, I see what all their problems are. Now we're going to, we're going to fix them and we're going to make the the next best thing. So what are you doing to kind of be like ahead of that? So we absolutely read every single comment multiple times on Facebook, Instagram. I've been trying to be as active as I can on getting people honest answers and feedback who reach out to us and we again we see everything and we're trying to adjust to it so we do have something else um something else planned out where we're kind of talking about maybe possibly doing a little bit larger stand um trying to mess with some things one thing that we're really fighting to figure out is uh is the cable and we see a lot of people saying you know why don't you use the lone wolf the lone wolf cable, lone wolf cable is awesome. Yeah, the lone wolf cable is badass. It's also trademarked and copyrighted, <laughs> so we we can't use that. I mean, it is awesome. It is perfect. It's a great idea, but we we can't do that. Um, the other things we have in the works, we're really we really 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 badly wanted to go to ATA this year and the Great American Outdoor Show to just get in front of people and talk to them in person to let them know like you know we're not we're not a billion dollar company we're not a million dollar company I'm not even sniffing that um we're just regular rednecks just like everybody else who hunts we just wanted to talk to people but that's something that we're going to do next year when we're a little bit better prepared and have a little bit more inventory built up um we're actively trying daily i mean alex and i and josh and i we talk for hours every single day about how we can get better how we can grow ourselves to maybe one day actually be in the conversation with lone wolf because the fact of the matter is if lone wolf or some of these other companies come out with something like us they are who they are <laughs> they are who they are they can go off the name um but it's been it's been fun and it's been just awesome just to see people around the united states talking about something we did and it's just been it's been a dream come true and it's still hard to wrap my head around. So, so let's just address the elephant in the room. Probably the question that you get every single time with uh, why don't you use the lone wolf? Like, why isn't it cast? So that's a that's a great question. Um, number one, cast is not as strong as two. And we're just not willing to sacrifice something that's sexy for something that's safer. Um, tube aluminum is stronger than cast aluminum. Ours, when we had, when we had the 600 pounds hanging off of it, ours didn't flinch. It didn't even crack or creak. Like you and I talked, the tube in the back does bow a little bit when you use it. And that's just because you got stainless on aluminum, but it's only going to bow so much. It's only just going to, it's just going to create a little bit of a dip, but it's not going to increase. It's something that is not going to get bigger. It's never going to worsen. It's going to be what it is. And that's just for your, the way it goes when you're climbing. The cast also, the long answer of why we don't do cast is because the companies that you work with, they have to create a mold. And when they create a mold, you have to pay for the mold. And also to make it worth their time, they're going to crank out 50 to 100,000 units to make it worth that company's time. And you're talking close to a quarter million dollars out of pocket, maybe even a half a million dollars out of pocket. And then we're also sitting on those 50,000, 100,000 
units and hoping like hell we can sell them because if not we got a warehouse somewhere that's got 50,000 stands in it that aren't selling not only that then if you make upgrades uh you're stuck with the old model that's probably not going to sell as well <laughs> that's exactly right when you come up that newer better thing to something that light bulb comes on and clicks you're exactly right you're sitting there still with that warehouse full right <clears throat> yeah so uh, like i say that that to me is the one question that in you know realistically you would just be you'd be damned if you do and damned if you don't because it's like oh well they're just ripping off lone wolf's mm -hmm. hand climber seat like <laughs> you know so there'd be so many haters on on that side of it too um yep. And theirs is a great product. I mean, it, it is what it is, dude. That's a, that's an awesome product. It looks great. and It works. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of those that have been, like, modified and adapted. And, you know, a bunch of them have broken and, and different things. But the, the, one, the one thing that I've seen on it that I thought – the the only one that i've seen like it is they took one and then they put a an actual post in the center of it so like once they got to hunting height they flipped that up and then put a cam buckle around it so it so it, it didn't move so it operated just like a regular Platform. stand but you still had all the things hanging off of the side of it so right. it was kind of a, i don't know you you were still you know uh captured inside of that that thing but you know for everybody like my thoughts are you know it just whether it's a, a stand in itself or using it as a climbing system you know for a guy that loves his climber but hates i mean again he would never use it like i said but for you know my father-in-law frank it, those guys are climbers till the end they're never going to change ever but at some point you know the the 25 pounds or whatever hanging off his back for you know two foot out here and getting snagged up on everything it it, it seems like it would be a no-brainer for that guy and if for nothing else it would be somewhat of like the gateway into saddle hunting where you could still hunt all of your same stuff without having to carry as much right. bulk and having to learn stick because i mean just think about it like frank or chris like trying to do sticks yeah it's it's not or one sticking well that well and and that again goes I mean, back because you're kind of comparing the two i mean one sticking to this as a climbing well, and that's one of the things I wanted to say to you about even like method of use. So, so John here, when I got the saddle two years ago or three years ago now, whatever, and uh, he's like, there's no way in hell you're getting me in that thing. It's so stupid. Yeah, and then like, it's like, let me, it. let me try it. Let me, let me try this. <laughs> no, was, well, they've all heard up the story. I mean, I was at the point where I was either going to not hunt or find something that, you know, I could carry that was lighter and less bulky and that's when you're like well just take my i'm not hunting tonight take my i think at the time you had the manis mm -hmm. and it was like well that was a no-brainer like there's still i mean i don't know there's still times where i think about you know sitting in the stand i mean i sat like i think it was the next day we went hunting together mm -hmm. that's when we did the zz top but um and I kept feeling like I was falling out of my tree stand. I mean, I was just hooked in, but that's the one thing I like the most about saddle hunting is that you're always secure. Like you're never going to just fall out. But then like, keep going to like one stick and bullshit. We're not doing that in here. Now we're, we're looking at uh, one of the one sticks here. And, you know, I thought I really did. I thought John was going to give me like a whole bunch of crap, but you know, for all of this stuff, like we got to, I feel like, we're doing the listeners a disservice if we don't 
understand it and have some experience right. with it and and i thought for sure john's going to be like whatever that's so stupid and then the last episode he says yeah well ever since i've seen that video of taylor doing it you know i'm good thinking about giving it a shot you know well yeah i mean after seeing taylor do it and then you know the thought process and i was like if there is a spot where i need to get way up you're you're only limited by your rappel rope at that point mm -hmm. and so I'm like, yeah, it's not going to be for every situation. I mean, you know, I really, I really love just, I love my wild edge steps. I like the timber ninja sticks, but just the, yeah, it's a little more step at a time, one step at a time, but you're pulling them out of the pouch, put them on. When you come down, you're putting them back in the pouch, you get to the bottom of the tree, you tuck them in and throw them in your pack. Um, sticks, I've just always had. You know, you got them dangling off you as you're climbing up and, you know, <laughs> shit's hitting you in the face. And, but, but that's why I think like from, from a product like this, right. Like so, just, a, 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 and just don't a get me wrong, little so like, bit, a little bit of refinement. And I think you'd be right there and in, in so the same thought process. I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest here. When, when Adam pulled that thing out of the box, the first time I seen it, I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I mean, with all the clips and the cables and all the stuff, I'm like, and I grabbed it and I shook it and it was like, sounds like, you know, reindeer coming through the woods, but now he's got it all stealth stripped and everything is, you know, kind of tightened up. It's not nearly as loud. And like, as you explained it, you're not going up. You're, it's not like a race. You're going up nice and slow. Um, you know, it's another tool. I'm just going to have to give it a shot and give it a try. But so what's the retail on that? Um, they're for sale for 280 bucks. We have, um, three different colors. Available. We got black bronze and green. Um, they it's hundred percent made in the USA. It's actually all made here in Augusta County, welded powder coated, um, cut local metal distributor. So it's all 100% USA. Okay. What's like your turnaround? Like how long does it take you to build that? Like when you say you send it out, you got, you got one shop doing them or do you have it like one shop cuts them, one shop, um, swelled them up. So we actually do all the cutting ourselves. Um, so from the time that we get the metal, we cut it, send it to the welders. We usually send, 25 to 30 to 40 at a time to go to the welder that usually takes about a week for him to get them welded and then we'll take them to the powder coater powder coating takes anywhere depending on how busy they are from two days to a week so roughly two weeks to get them back to us before we can ship them out and then take them to ups and typically typically ups gets them to people you know we're from virginia to minnesota florida new hampshire where we're shipping them is about two to three days true yeah i like like i say uh, the the pins for me and i you know john he was saying you know it's just reminds him of the older tree sins but what uh, in that um capacity i guess what are your options what are the other options besides pins i mean I'm sure people are coming out of the woodwork telling you this is what you need to do. <laughs> so we, <laughs> the main feedback we get there is just don't do pins. We left those in the 80s. I, that was a comment on Facebook, and I actually laughed at it, and I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just something that, I mean, I've been racking my brain on it for several months on how we can do it, and we've thought about something like the, uh, the Kong, maybe where it can just, clip against it and maybe just get a little bit bigger cable but then you get a big cable you have more weight um as far as the design goes that was something you and i discussed about you know being old school it's not old school it's classic <laughs> um, <laughs> and that is the, the design is literally just just a safety factor man it's a you have your weight being held on four different points so it's just it's just a much 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 safer route for our customers and everybody that's using it because you, you're locked in four different places. You got two on the left side, two on the right side. You got to work on a 45 degree angle. 
So your weight's never being distributed and focus in on one area. Um, we've messed with the design. We've messed with a lot of different things. And that's something that we're currently working on. Like I said before the podcast, uh, we have something new going to the welder that we hope to get out in maybe the next year or two. Yeah. So like what, what are you guys up against with um, like, patents and proprietary stuff because i mean if you look at the loggy body or the summit they got those cables with them big ass balls on them that it seems to be like what everybody uses in the the climber market and it they clack around and they make a lot of noise and you know but um, i mentioned the old apis they used to have a chain yeah well that's what with that pins through yeah i I still got three of them i love them (laughs) And then, that, then the cable, the the sheathing on it would all crack, and then it would get stuck mm-hmm. and hung up. But even like something like yeah. that, like is that is that proprietary? Like, could you not? I don't think the API would be, um, just because it is such an old model. I mean, like I said, I got three of them that I use. I'm pretty sure Dad got those in like 1985 or something like that. Um, so we could probably maybe go something along that route. I'd love to figure out something, just something else, something that's just a little bit prettier and more efficient too, but it ain't dawned on me yet. And if anybody out there has any ideas, hit me up on Facebook. I'm open to all suggestions. Well, and again, like that's why I like, I like to have these conversations with people that are that are doing something, but I also like really appreciate the fact that like, you guys can understand that, you know, you've built a, a, a classic rather, rather than something that is, uh, you know, uh, cutting edge or, or whatever. Now the idea is something that's, you know, maybe never been done before. However, it's, you know, you're, you're, you're going back and using, using technology that works um, and that has worked, but it's just not, you know, what, maybe what people are, are expecting, um, these days. I mean, I got this best way to put it. It kind of reminds me, I remember way, way back, back in, uh, when Angler Archer was still down and, and the TSS snipers came out, they actually shipped out little mini stands that they would put on a little display model. (laughs) And that when I first seen it, I was like, man, it looks just like the display model, but like when you're going through the like tent section of like right. denims or whatever, yeah. and they got the little tents up there yeah. showing you like, Honey, what? I shrunk the tree stand. <laughs> but, I mean, smaller is better, right? That's what I tell her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, like, like I say, um, where are you guys like, like what's your like 10 year, five year, one year goals? I mean, how have you, from the time, you, when did you launch this? We actually didn't launch until was it, November 11th. Uh, November 11th is when we launched the website. November 13th, we came onto Facebook and posted everywhere that, you know, this is what we got. Here we are. Um, we received a pile of feedback good bad and indifferent everywhere from this is awesome to i can make this in my garage for 25 bucks you know why do i need to spend 280 bucks like well if you can do that and your labor's free give me a call i'd love for your work for me um and <laughs> just all, all kinds of crazy feedback and stuff but it's been it's been fun we've been doing ads and stuff on facebook instagram just trying to get our name out there people know about us um one year goal we just want to keep selling. <laughs> we want to keep selling. We want to go to these shows. We want to meet people. We want to talk to people. Let them know we're just normal people. We're not millionaires. We don't have a million dollar credit line through the bank that we're just spending money on. It's going to be on the outdoor channel. It's nothing like that. We'd like to be there. You know, one year, five years. We'd love to have. I'd love to be doing this full time. That's that's my personal goal. I want to be doing this full time. I want to go to shows, go to talk to people, um, have this be a full-time thing. 
that's really the biggest thing is I just, I want to grow this company as much as we possibly can. So uh, hindsight being 2020 and just simply asking like launching like in the middle of the season, like w- w- were you guys set out to, you know, what were you going to say? Okay, well, we want to get this thing done by this summer or did it all just come together that quickly? And you're like, okay, well now the ball's rolling. We got to, we got to, you know, get some of these things sold. So initially Alex had his idea and he went in front of a couple companies and presented it and going back to the patent thing, he wanted to get a patent. The patent office said, no, we can't do this. It's too close to just a traditional climber. Like everybody else says, we can't give you a patent. So that rolls into August and September. And me and his brother just kept telling him like, dude, like we got something like we can, we might not be millionaires in a year or two, but we got something that will sell. So we decided to take it on ourselves and we wanted to launch before bow season. Well, ultimately it came down to insurance. Insurance just took much longer than we thought it was. We got it tested. The guys we sent it down to in Georgia, SGS, TEC, they did a phenomenal job. They got our product turned right around like a week or two. They sent it back to us. So we were well in front of our set deadline, which was October 1st. Insurance just took longer and just took months to put together. So that's why we ended up coming out in the middle of November versus October 1st was literally just because of insurance. Well, I think that that's like incredibly important, um, you know, for, you know, whatever people want to think that these guys just make them in their garage and, you know, there's nothing, nothing behind them that you guys went through everything to do all the testing that you are fully insured that it's, you know, everything is, you know, done correctly um, Mm -hmm. is important, but I just, I see, you know, we, we talk to a lot of people like in around the hunting industry that don't have time to hunt, that don't have, you know, that deal with, you know, like John asking about the, like like the turnaround time and stuff that have, you know, all the stuff with, you know, we're going to put out this product, everything's going to be great. And then you do all the hype and then you can't deliver on it or you end up right in the middle of season where you can't win for trying because everybody's in the middle of the season and they need it for this trip. They're supposed to be in Missouri and UPS didn't show up. And I can't imagine trying to do that right in the peak um, of the rut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, that was, that was uh, just about our peak of the rut. And um, our other partner, Josh has been instrumental in that part. Like he has done an absolutely he's gone above and beyond with the insurance and stuff and Tyler with helping out on our social media, Tyler from uh, the given right TV. He's done an outstanding job with our social media stuff, like where he set us up with pictures and videos. He shot the video and edited it in his own time. He was, he was out in Minnesota and all over the West for the last three weeks. Dude gets back as a newborn baby, gets back home and cranks out our video in a day like he spent like 12 hours editing our video and spit it out the next day as soon as he got home so we got a great team behind us and um it's just been we're very very fortunate to have a great team working with us um talking about (laughs) having time to hunt i was actually i actually had a vacation the week after we um launched and thankfully we got a bunch of sales but i hunted the mornings and in the and from noon till seven i was over at alex's boxing stands up and shipping out to people and i would not have rather than anything else at that point we were like yeah screw hunting i'd much rather be doing this well it's always great to see like something that you're that you're doing be accepted and you know like for us Mm -hmm. doing the this podcast is like you know john and i used to have these conversations you know at 3 in the morning in his garage and it's like, well, why don't we just start recording this stuff and we'll just talk about it. And then now for whatever reason, people listen. So <laughs> not sure why. <laughs> no. And John's yeah, like, like <laughs> John, John's like the most like, like, he, like this, right. He's just, he's just fly on the wall for 
much of everything and then but you you want to talk bow tuning or arrows or anything like that fishing you you better pack a bag hope you got a lunch because it's gonna be a minute (laughs) so i like putting them on the spot like that though too speaking of bows one you know one of the questions i always ask our you know our guest what what's your bow setup what bow are you shooting i'm shooting a uh, expedition archery mx15 um that's the company that tyler films for the guy that he films for owns expedition and uh, tyler helped me out and hooked me up with it last year i got <laughs> i got pissed because i set a record that i hope nobody out there ever breaks i missed four deer in one set so, oh geez. obviously obviously it was not my fault it was my bow's fault so <laughs> i hit up tyler and said i need something new um and he hooked me up with the mx15 dude i freaking love it um it shoots over 300 feet per second is what they say with my setup it shoots like 280 286 something like that um i just shoot some gold tip gold tip hunter xt's errors and uh what are they NAP Spitfires, I think is what they are. Expandable broadhead. Mm-hmm. Um, haven't got to shoot a deer yet this year with it. I had one five yards out of the saddle, and she just never stopped for me. And I was like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not in the mood to go on a wild goose chase today. I ain't playing in there. Screw it. But I love it so far. I mean, it does. It shoots well for me. Good deal. So what's the that MX15 like? Do you know a lot about that boat? There. There is a, a guy, um, they were just doing a, a giveaway, someone who had lost their uh, house in the, the tornadoes that went through Kentucky, and uh, they were doing a giveaway of one of those, and I, di- I didn't know if it was that, that's the five-inch brace height one, like the super fast bow, or or what? So do you, do I you know? So. Okay. I, I actually don't, I'm, I'm actually not real well-versed <laughs> in those, I'm really not, I apologize. I just... I, I, I don't blame you. I, I don't think most people are, but now I got to sit next to this guy a lot. So <laughs> these are all the questions that everybody that, that he'll ask me about these things or he'll, he'll tell me. Yeah. So, well, I'm a bow geek. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, man, I, like I said, I, I wanted to have this conversation with you um, on the podcast because I can make a video about the stand and I can say, you know, these are the things, the, the only thing that people are going to get from a conversation like that are the, the pins. We don't like the pins and, you know, they, everybody accentuates only on the negatives and they won't take the time to listen to the entire discussion. So like I said, I, I didn't want it to come across as like that, you know, for you guys just starting out and for us to say, yeah, these are the things that we don't like about it. This is how I would use it because people will only see negative. <laughs> so. I, no, I, I really appreciate that, man. You and I talked about that on the phone. I respect the hell out of y'all for having me on here and give me an opportunity to be able to um, not really counter, but for us to discuss it and walk through everything as like why we did this. Why is it the old school? set up versus something pretty like the lone wolf hand climber like there's there's reasons for everything there is a, a why for every single thing um yeah and i just really 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 appreciate you guys for having me on here and this opportunity to discuss it no problem man well we really appreciate you taking the time and and you know for for sending us one and you know for us it to to have all of this stuff and to be able to to do this is you know, we get to show it to so many people when we go out and, you know, everybody wants to see the saddles and they want to see the sticks and they want to see everything. So we'll, we'll make sure that uh, as many people get, get a chance to mess with it as we can. Um, But really appreciate the time. So. Hey, absolutely. All right. All right.